It's a bit like the, um, you heard the paperclip story. The guy that like trades yep. a paperclip, keeps tra- he trades it for like a pencil and then trades that for whatever. And then he ends up trading it for a house. It was literally cu- kind of like that. Like, you know, I started off, as I mentioned, in the early days with just crappy dad cam, handy cams type things. But as I started, I think the first camera that I bought that was worth money was a Canon 550D. Mm. which I don't know what the equivalent would be now, but it's just the bottom, bottom, bottom end of the digital SLR. Yeah, maybe uh, like a Rebel, I think, over here. Or oh, that's like exactly that. what it is. Yeah. yeah, that's exactly what it is. I think it's maybe, yeah, it was about three or 400 English pounds. Yeah. Um, that, was the, that was the one where I didn't know any of the settings. That's that camera. At oh, that I era it. where I was just twiddling and just no idea of what I was doing. Um, but basically, every time I earned money from jobs that I was doing, Um, as soon as I had enough, I would sell the previous camera, buy the next best camera. So I think, you know, if you want to know my actual timeline of cameras to the Alexa Mini, which, you know, could be interesting for some people. Oh yeah, definitely. Um, so it would have gone 550D. I sold that and got a 7D, which I don't think, I don't think that was a full frame sensor on that one. I don't know. No, I think it's crap. Yeah. Yeah. I had that one for a while, then eventually sold that and got a 5D Mark III. Um, which was at the time the like the ultimate camera. That was the like, that's the good one. That's the one you want to get. There was yeah. not really, because at that time, things like a Red or things like a Alexa Mini, they weren't even on my radar. I didn't even know what they were at all. The 5D Mark III was a lot of money for me to spend at the time, but it was everything I'd made from all these jobs. And it felt like it was important to me, goes back to that thing of most clients had no concept of the difference. They couldn't tell the difference. Um, but for me, it was important to just try and get the best image, try and you know just make things look as good as they could. Um, so I had that, the 5D Mark III for a little while. And then I think from there, I jumped to the Sony FS700. Don't know if you know that camera, kind of- Yeah, I've heard about it bazooka looking thing it's ridiculous it only had the screen on the top and it was kind of sort of had to hold it like that and but it had amazing slow-mo that was the era of 200 frames per second slow-mo. oh nice it was like, yeah if you're going to shoot anything shoot it 200 frames per second <laughs> honestly editing was just like scrubbing through this endless like <laughs> ooh. it was crazy um, it was kind of like dubstep time as well it was like early dubstep everything slow-mo like get some wah, wah, wah. it was pretty funny um, but then I think from there, an upgrade to that was I got like a raw recorder, the Odyssey 7Q, like got mm. that, stuck that on the top of it. And then you got like better quality and big screen. And that was pretty cool. Then I think from there, I was like, I was, at that point I was doing a lot of jobs. You know, I was, I was working on a lot of stuff and I was doing, doing pretty well for myself. Um, and I had the plan to buy a red. I was like, right, I'm doing it. I'm doing wow. it. It's, it's happening. I've, I'd used one one. No, I'd used it a few times. A friend of mine, um, a really great cinematographer actually called Jordan Buck. Um, check him out if anyone's watching this. He's like mad skills, like a lot better than I am at what I do. <laughs> but he had a, he's like, I would say he's got sort of like four or five years further down the path than I am. Um, and he had a red for a while and I would use it on certain things and I just, Loved it. By the way, um, which which red was this at the time? It was a red dragon. Oh, got um, it. Yeah, it was a funny story about this. I think I'd used it maybe once. Or no, or maybe I'd hired him to shoot with me on something. But basically, I'd, I'd done some job, some snowboarding thing, and then some guys who I actually work with loads right now. I do this documentary thing with them like a lot. But they needed someone with a red camera to shoot something. And someone told them that I had one, that I owned one. And so they messaged me like, oh, I've got this job coming up. We need, we heard you've got this camera and blah, blah, blah. And I, I don't know if this is good advice for anyone, but I basically just lied to them and was like, yeah, 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 I'll, I'll, bring, my, I'll bring my camera to your shoot, definitely. Called up Jordan and was like, hey man, I've got this shoot and they think that I've got this camera. So like, do you reckon I can just like rent it off you for next to no money? Um, and then yeah, basically went on the shoot and, I actually think maybe I hadn't used it before because now I think back to it, I didn't really, all the like touch screen, all the settings, I didn't know what was going on. But it was kind of a success and, and that kind of led to, like I say, this was about eight years ago and I'm still working with those guys that I kind oh, of awesome. lied to about the camera. And 
Um, I hope they don't I listen can... to this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Unlikely. Um, but it doesn't matter. Um, but what was I going to say? Yeah, so basically, oh, I say basically all the time. Um, I had, I, I was borrowing that a lot and my, my plan was to buy a red dragon, a used red dragon. I knew a couple of other people that had one and I was like, that's, that's what I'm going to do. 